Hydra was PVE content, and someone else in my in my uh, in one of my other videos talked about it, where he was like, "Yeah, um, Hydra used to be PVE content. Then they introduced Hydra Clash, and it quickly became PVP. And I understand the reason behind why, as as a business, as a corporation, why Polarium would make that decision because it's money. When when PVP aspects are involved." They make money because like there's the psychological aspect behind it. You know, we're human. We get competitive and there are people out there with a crap ton of money, more money than I'll ever, <laughs> ever know. But there's some people out there who are willing to drop hundreds of thousands uh, in the game. Which is cool if you can do that, but it, it, it just it just means that the, the experience might and you can tell me if I'm wrong here. Be a rather negative one for the rest of the people, because like how many of you guys think that Hydra has become more so of a problem than a blessing? Like I know we get some pretty sick rewards. I know that we get um like protection, stone skin, some primal quartz here, but I don't know what do you guys think cuz cuz me like I I guess I could have done without that kind of I don't even really use protection gear. Stone skin I kind of use, but not really. The primal quartz are 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 nice. Um but Hydra Clash in and of itself, I'm, I don't know. I don't know. Player makes money off of it, for sure. Because now they have so many different um, avenues for, for them to sell products. Oh, you want to do more damage in Hydra? Get this champion. Uh, summon for this champion. You know what I mean? We could go to the stars about about it. But yeah, that's, that's probably why I think um, Hydra Clash has become a thing. I don't necessarily like how it's become so PvP related. All I know is if they change Wixwell, then they better change Trunda. Yeah, trying to build the Yannicka team, as you see my thought there, I feel it. I've been hearing mixed things about it. I think at most what they're going to do is they're not going to directly nerf Wixwell. But what I did hear from other content creators and, and you know seeing on, on Reddit and seeing other thumbnails is that they're talking about putting a cap to how much damage uh, shield combo teams could do. I don't have Trunda or the supporting cast to even make that team, so the closest I can get to anything remote is Yannicka team comp. Yeah, the other thing about that was like people were saying that the Wixwill Yannicka team is not an easy one to build. Now, I didn't look at the team. Like I've seen the results in Hydra Clash because you can see other people's uh, other clans um, teams. So I've seen it. I don't know how to build it. I'm not going to build it because I already do more than enough in Hydra for me to be happy. But people are saying that it's not easy to build. And so a, a lot of the, the the backlash from the community is, why are you going to nerf the Wixwell Yannicka team when it's not even accessible to a lot of people to begin with? And then the other argument on top of that, the little cherry on top, is apparently the Yumiko Trunda teams do significantly more damage. And I, I know, I, I, I intend to agree with that. But here's the thing, again, I don't want any nerfs. I don't think anybody should be nerfed, but... Yeah, I'm just explaining what, what other people were saying. I hate Hydra since the first day. Uh, I can tell you what needs a huge nerf. Whoever makes all these decisions needs to be nerfed. <laughs> Fucking hard to make it work. I tried. I'm short on speed and defense. Yeah, the team isn't easy to build. Yeah, so it's one of those things where it's just like, dude, if it's not easy to build, if it's not completely accessible to everybody, or maybe the, the argument is that it is, right? Because Yannicka is a free-to-play champion. Wix will, I, from what I saw... I didn't go for him, but from what I saw, it was a relatively easy fusion to do. So I'm like a lot of people have him. So I don't know, but I just know it's going to be a huge dick slap in the face of the community, especially because this was a community fusion. Any type of nerf, in my opinion, isn't going to be well received. I guess the lesser of two evils is to just put a cap on on shield combo damages, but I hope they don't do any direct nerfs. You know what I mean? They're probably going to nerf Yannicka eventually. Probably. But the whole Yannicka damage thing wasn't even a new thing. Like, I, I remember a long years ago, uh, people were, were promoting Yannicka to be used as a damage dealer in Hydra a long time ago. But I think uh, her damage exponentially rose with the rise of Wixful. Sometimes you win Hydra Clash and you don't always get, like, the best rewards. Sometimes you even get gear that you just end up selling because... The, set, the substats are bad or it rolls pretty badly so it's kind of a waste and then the other argument is to not sell anything that you get because like you want stone skin accessories etc but then i found this post right here we won the first 
ever hide your clash, and this was all that was in the chest. I mean, that's pretty terrible. I'm proud of our clan. We worked hard in our first hide your clash, and we coordinated our keys and made a push to try and get as many people participating in it as we could. We took first place, and I personally got slightly over 400 million points, second best available chest. Um, so not the top chest, obviously, if you get the top chest, then you'll, you know, the rewards are probably going to look better than this. But still, for Hydra, the rewards are like this. So you get your initial PvE stuff, uh, rewards from doing Hydra. If you can get the top chest, you get all of these things here, right? And then there's Hydra Clash. And the way that it works here is what you get is based on whether or not you win. And it also is based on what your placement is. And it is also based on what you personally do. So let me break it down a little bit further. If you are in a clan that wins Hydra Clash, let's say you guys get first place. You yourself have to score at least 650 million personally in order to get this chest here. If you only score 350 million, and you still get first, and your clan wins first place, you will only get the 35 million uh, chest here. You're only, you're, only get, you're only going to get the Argent chest. So for an example, right now my clan is in first place. I personally have only done a little under 700 million. This is my team, full auto. I just set it down and I forget it. So because my score is over 250 million, I am going to get the ornate gilded chest and my my rewards from that are going to look relatively similar to this yeah so you get your stone skin your protection accessories uh, i either get a book or i get quartz and then of course you get your clan xp and then your your coins if you guys get second place and you still put up 650 million plus then you're gonna get the gilded chest if you get third place and you personally yourself got 650 plus you're getting the ornate argent chest and i thought this post here was pretty cool uh math landry 12 says we need more ways to get primal shards I believe mythicals are fun and good addition to the game the problem is we don't get enough primal shards to summon them let's look at the hydra first place rewards from hydra clash let's assume you manage to get first place every week for one year Let's also say you will get a book half of the time and Primal Quartz the other half. Finally, let's assume you always get one Mythical book and 100 Primal Quartz. This would net you 26 books and 26 Primal Shards. This means that after a year, you will be able to fully book 2-3 to three Mythical Champions. You'll need more than 7 years before pulling your first Mythical Champion if you reach Mercy. How does that make any sense? I know they're supposed to be super rare champions, but the balance is just off. Yeah. 100%. Seven years, according to this math here, to pull your first mythical champions, uh, champion if you only get the Primal Quartz from the Hydra Clash. Am I the only one thinking that's crazy? Am I the only one with more mythic books than legendaries half of the time? I know you can get more shards through events, live arena, arena chests, etc. This is coming from someone who has our buy. <laughs> Money is, is always going to be the answer. They want you to buy their shards, their Primal Shards. I agree that Primal Shards should be easier to acquire. Honestly, at 0.5% odds, it wouldn't make much of a difference. If anything, they should change the drop rates, which they won't. And this guy furthers my point. They exist to make player money. If you can think of a way to make them more obtainable while making player more money, I'm sure they'll listen. If not, there's no uh, incentive. Especially this becoming more of a competitive space, the difficulty increases. It's just like that conversation I had about Platinum Arena. It's really hard to place the top 500 in Platinum Arena. The rewards that you get from doing Plat Arena like aren't really the best. So I understand their frustration here. Yeah, this is like 10 months ago, but having a single five-star accessory coming in for the first place in the second best chest seems very dumb, uh, dumb especially anyone who's able to get over 300 million. They're beyond using five-star accessories. And again, that was one of the woes that I was talking about in uh, Platinum Arena. You know, sometimes more often than not, you end up with five star gear. Hydra Clash is a complete train wreck. You've run some cheese teams on normal, or you have Trunda, exactly, or you do ridiculous amounts of damage that no one can replicate if you don't have those characters. Hence the Trunda and Yumiko teams. And on top of that, it's only the top three that gets rewarded. It's beyond stupid. A complete whale fest. 300 coins, nice. I think what critics are missing 
is that these rewards come with zero in-game resource costs except player effort. Also, the reward pieces are pretty powerful. Don't know about you, I'm pretty endgame. Did 2.5 billion clash points. Surely five-star reaction gear on some ST arena champs using live arena. You know, that makes sense, but I don't do live arena, so I don't care about that. Protection and stone skin accessories are powerful, even at five stars. So here's the thing about protection and stone skin. I honestly don't even use it that much. A protection set on somebody like, I don't know, Sippy would be great. But what if you don't have Sippy? And even then, that's more of like an arena build. Like, you can do fine without it. Stone skin? I don't have a lot of champions in stone skin. I don't really use stone skin. At least pop-ups. Like, I have quite a few pieces. I just sold a bunch. But, like, I'm stacked on stone skin. And I think the only person I really have in stone skin has got to be UDK. And Mortar Macabre. Should they up the rewards for Hydro Clash? What are your thoughts and opinions? Do you wish that they would just completely get rid of the PvP aspect to Hydra so that it can go back to being PvE? 